You know, in that first reading, St. Paul writing to Timothy speaks about the requirements to be a bishop or a deacon in the early church. What's interesting about it, he said he must be married. Not he might be married, but he must be married. It's part of the Semitic culture at the time. In order to be accepted as a leader, you had to be married, but only once, it says. It's kind of interesting. Um, some other time to discuss the high value or low value of celibacy, which is 800 years old in our tradition. But it's interesting, in the very early church, they had to be married. Couldn't be a single man or woman. Okay. The gospel reading is interesting because it speaks about this event at a city called Naim, never mentioned anywhere else. This miracle only appears in Luke, and the city of Naim is not mentioned anywhere else in the Bible. It's kind of interesting. Um, today, it's a little hamlet. It's only six miles from Nazareth, and uh, nobody lives there anymore. There's a little chapel there, Franciscans, and there's a small mosque there for the Muslims. Um, but it doesn't, doesn't get any attention anywhere else. Now, when Jesus sees um, this uh, procession for the man who had died, it says he was deeply moved. Now, the Greek word is phlangzitsamai, and that's, that's very deliberate here. That phlangzitsamai is found only two other places. One is in chapter 10 in Luke's Gospel. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. And the man who is injured and abandoned, and others pass him by. Samaritan comes and he said, he is deeply moved. He's deeply moved. Not just he notices him now. He identifies with him. He, he's, he becomes part of the crisis. It's also mentioned in chapter 15 in Luke's Gospel. Remember the prodigal son went off and recklessly squandered his inheritance? And then when he came back, Luke says, his father saw him when he was far off and he was deeply moved. I mean, this is a shattering, a, some kind of a life transforming um, experience of being moved. It's not just I noticed, I felt sorry for him. It's much more than that. Why is it that it appears only here um, in Luke's Gospel uh, in terms of how Jesus was moved? Interestingly, too, Jesus touches the coffin. Now, Luke is very deliberate about that because once he touches that coffin, he has rendered uh, ritually unclean. If he is to follow the Levitical law, the Jewish law, he would have to go and be cleansed before he can go to the temple. So um, clearly he doesn't give much attention to these little laws that are not terribly important. It's good teaching for us. He raises this man and hands him back to his mother. Now, we wonder... Why, um, what's interesting too is, Naim is in Galilee, but Luke's, Luke's um, geography is not very good. He's a remembrance. He's a classical scholar, writes excellent Greek, but his geography is not good because Naim is in Galilee, but he said, the word spread throughout the area of Judea, which is a different area not Galilee. Now, um, he was the only son of his mother who was a widow. A lot of scholars begin to identify this in terms of Jesus himself being the only son of a widowed mother. By this time, Joseph would have died. 
That's why we have Joseph here, patron of a happy death, because when he died, Mary and Jesus were with him. Um, so is Jesus identifying so much with this situation that it reflects his own condition, that he will be the only son of a widowed mother when he dies? And that's what scholars look at this and say, this is Jesus remembering the destiny which he has himself. The only son of a widowed mother, nobody to support the mother, she'll be alone when he's gone. So he performs this miracle. It's very interesting, and um, it probably prompts us to be deeply moved with people who are in crisis. Now, not just to notice this, but to allow it to affect us that people in poverty or people in crisis or people in our families who are struggling or having a hard time, to really connect with their feelings, to belong to them in a special way after the example of Jesus Christ, to say, I, I want to identify with you I want to grasp the pain you have, the struggle you have, the fear, the anxiety, the concern, the questions you have. I want these to become part of who I am. That's what it means when Jesus says he had pity on the situation. It's good teaching for us. When you go out into the journey of your day, and you're going to meet somebody in crisis or in pain or struggling or lost, and you're going to say, well, I want to identify with that. I myself have been lost. I have carried pain myself. I can identify with this person. I allow this person to move me somehow deeply in an interior way, not just to feel sorry for them, but to belong to them. I think that's the very powerful teaching of Jesus here being deeply moved um, in this moment of raising this young man from the dead. We pause now for a moment of prayer.